The UN's outgoing human rights envoy for Myanmar says the country's leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, has failed to live up to her reputation as a humanitarian. Her time in the role has been especially dominated by Myanmar's crackdown in Rakhine State. In 2017, 750,000 people, mostly Rohingya Muslims, fled across the border into Bangladesh. Earlier, we spoke to Yanni Lee, who said that uh, Suu Kyi's inaction was utterly disappointing. From the reports I get, it's really difficult to say that they're not tar deliberately targeting because it, they know where the houses are, where they know where the villages are, they know where schools are. One monastery was also hit, and uh, shellings and, and bombings continue. And it's really hard to believe uh, that they're not targeting civilians. Human rights groups like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, um, several of them, they've said that Myanmar authorities practiced ethnic cleansing against the Rohingya Muslims. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, uh, and I did say that uh, in my previous uh, reports and statements that this is a hallmark of just genocide and it uh, is uh, attributed and uh, allegedly uh, looks like um, ethnic cleansing. What is your personal conclusion on the question of genocide? Well, I can't come out with a conclusion before the court that is mandated to deal with genocide. Uh, it comes out with a decision. But, uh, and I say, again, I repeat, the hallmarks of genocide. Are you disappointed with Aung San Suu Kyi? Utterly, utterly disappointed. We all knew that she was uh, put on a pedestal or portrayed as the icon of democracy and human rights. But ever since the NLD has taken office and ever since she took the office of the state councillor, all of her actions and her words, statements point otherwise. And recently, with the pandemic of COVID-19, how she is supporting and giving more power to the Tetma doll uh, in containing the widespread uh, and also in the quarantine aspect of managing COVID-19. Uh, that really scares me. And, and how she had portrayed uh, the Tetma doll in the Hague during the ICJ uh, is also very uh, alarming and it's very indicative of how she has changed her stance. Or maybe, I, I know, I, I still would like to believe that she can change what how she's been doing now, but uh, perhaps the world didn't really know who she was. Do you she think really she should be then stripped the of her Nobel Peace Prize? Well, you know, Nobel Peace Prize, they, the committee came out and said they can't strip her of any Peace Prize. So um, that's for the Nobel Peace uh, Committee to decide. But definitely, uh, she is not the human rights icon. She is not the democracy icon. And peace... Uh, the Panglong Conference, the peace negotiations within Myanmar has faltered. There is no peace going on. There's not even a ceasefire in the other ethnic areas where there is heavy fighting. I, I don't have any regrets uh, as far as um, what I was able to do or what I was not able to do. It was unfortunate that the government denied access after 2017 in December, because I think it would have been to their benefit, to their best interest, to have me come in and see. Why, why uh, do you think they wouldn't let you back in after August 2017? Do, do you think they were well, trying to hide the situation from you? Yes, of course. I was getting too close to the situation in Rakhine and elsewhere. I was getting too close into uh, Kachin areas, into Shan areas, what's happening in the Pakant mining areas, what's going on in Chokpu, in this special economic zone in uh, Rakhine. And so I, I was getting too close. And it was very close to when the Reuters uh, uh, journalists 
mm. had been reporting about the situation of, of the massacre of the Indian and Tula Toli. This so is very important. I, I mean, do, do you think if you were able to go there, you may have um, come across evidence that would be very important right now in the, in the trial that's going on with the ICJ? I would, I would think so. And, and it could be evidence that may not uh, please the Western community or uh, for us in human rights field, too. But definitely, I would have had a direct access.